The Rugby League World Cup final has been decided, with Australia taking on England this weekend to see who will be the best team in the world. The two semi-finals were on the weekend, and one was marred with controversy, sadly, with uh, Tonga coming home strongly against England, but being denied victory in the last minute by a controversial call by referee Matt Chechen. Now, Will, you sent out a tweet through the week. Um, yeah. Basically, the issue is not that the decision was right or wrong, yeah. but the issue is that he didn't refer it to the third referee. Yeah, 100%. I, I, like, with that tweet, I stand by it 100%. I'm not going to delete it or anything like that. So that was exactly how I was feeling at that time. It was right at that time uh, when that decision happened. I just, I just thought it warranted, you know, to the, you know, you have a look at the, the aftermath of that game the emotion that everyone was showing, for him just to go, yeah, done, doesn't even warrant to go up to the to the video ref. I just thought it was just a bit of arrogance. It was a bit, I just don't think it was it was needed, you know? So like, you think he ruined the whole World Cup? By that one gonna, call? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's ruined my World Cup, he's ruined Tonga's World Cup. I thought, I mean, I think England were the better side for 77, 76 minutes, and then Tonga come back, and he did ruin my World Cup. So not the World Cup, maybe the World Cup if you're a Tonga yeah. supporter. It was a big call to say he ruined the whole World Cup. <laughs> You've got to think how much power social media has. Oh, big time, I man. thought it was a little bit harsh, to be honest. And I, I think we need to be really I can't careful. take it back, but... Well, you can't take it back. You put it out there in the, in the public domain and you've got to stand by what you say. So um, I okay. think Matt Cheshire... I'll be careful what I say here. I thought he made the right call. I definitely oh, think... I don't think there's an argument that it was the right call. The right call with not going up to the Hang thing. on a minute. Yes. I, I, don't, I, I agree that he should have went up to the, yeah, to the third referee to the video ref. Now, there's a few things that you put into perspective here for me. Matt, uh, Elliot Whitehead, I don't believe he played at the ball. His hand did hit the ball, loose carry, regathered, scores. If that's in the Super League, that's a try every day of the week. So if he went up to the video ref and there was an English guy in the video ref box, he awards that try. Yeah. But see, that's the different interpretations of the two games with Super League and NRL. Matt Chechen's got his interpretation here in the NRL and the English have a different interpretation. I've seen a lot worse tries be awarded in the Super League. Do you, so, do you think he would have known that he was an English ref and maybe would have overturned it? Do you reckon I'm, if he I'm, went up to the up it, to the video ref and you looked at it? Because I think I think people, like the, the crowd and fans are underestimating the skill of these players. Yep. You go for the ball in a situation like that. Yeah, I honestly, like you honestly, think, honestly think... You'd have to be stupid as a current player or as a player who's just retired to think that Elliot Whitehead wasn't going for the ball. Like, he was going for it. He was his, that was his only play, and he made a massive play. Yeah, I think, look, it wasn't as clear-cut as actually trying to knock the ball down. He's going to take... It was, it was a desperate tr tackle to try yeah. and take Fafita down. Now, his hand has hit the ball. Now Firstly. The it has, and it's come loose. But I still believe that that's a loose carry. Yeah, it is. It's a knock-on... And he got the call right. What I don't agree with is not going up to the. Well, that's, we're on the line. same. We're exactly the same. I just think if you look at it from the perspective of rugby league, now this game, the whole controversy now is about whether or not he sends it up. Now, if he sends it upstairs, it's probably knocked back. It's the same result, but everyone can just calm down. Well, if it's an English third umpire, he gives that try. Yeah, I guarantee you. Then and he was English. Well, if he was, then that, that was a try and Tonga would be in the World Cup final. But then the controversy would be England got robbed. Now, I get how much passion. It was a feel-good story of the World Cup, and I'm super proud of the Tongan people and the Tongan team for doing so well for not only Tonga, but the, all the Pacific yeah. nations and any, any second-tier nation for that matter. But uh, in the scheme of things, I, th I think Matt chechen has been a bit hard done by. Um, I think the decision was right and, in, and the better team went through. Do you think putting Matt Chechen on the sidelines this weekend, you know, sort of shows that he did make the wrong decision? Otherwise, he's supposed to be the best ref in the world, but he's not ref in the World Cup final. Well, not necessarily the wrong decision, but didn't follow the process as it was set. Well, I, look, everyone's saying that he went and checked so many different other tries throughout the game and then he didn't check that last one. Yeah. So... Look, everyone's going to hate on the ref. Yeah, you can't. No matter I mean, what, they're, yeah. the, they're the bad guy from the start. No he's one likes he's the probably the, To be fair to him, he's probably the best ref in the world. It's Absolutely. Just a shame to be that fair, one... to be fair, this one decision might mark him forever. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, England played better than Tonga for seventy-three, 73 minutes. minutes. Yeah. For seven minutes, Tonga just woke up and just went ballistic. Yeah. It was the best seven minutes of football oh. I've ever seen. It was the yeah. best atmosphere of football I've seen, bar Origin semi-finals and stuff like mm. that. 
in grand finals, you know. So Tonga had their chances to win the game. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Don't just go on this one play. Um, there was there was chances there. They, they, were, they were giving penalties away. They were just playing ill-disciplined football, you know. So you can't just really blame Chechen for this whole thing. But the, the whole point is he should have went up to the to went. the video ref. It yeah. shouldn't be on him. The game is a lot bigger than, you, than himself, you know. Like, I'm not saying that it was revolving around him, but... Who are you to just to go? All right, boom, it's all over, you know. Like you, yeah. you got a whole like. I know it's been a feel good story. The Tongan, you know, little Tonga has been unreal. So proud of him. Mm. It's been such a great story, and that's what really killed that's what everybody. Eats it. That's what eats it. That's everyone. what eats yeah. it. Everyone. It's like, damn, go to the video refs yeah. to give him a chance. That's all we wanted was a chance, you know. Like, and everybody was behind Tonga. Look at that crowd. You know what I mean? The singing and everything. Like everyone was so emotional. So everyone was making emotion. That tweet that I made was was all emotion. All based yeah. on emotion. Yeah, it wasn't. It yeah. wasn't rational thinking. But that's the way I was thinking at the time. So yeah. fuck it. You know, like I don't care. There's a there's a petition at the moment that's got over sixty thousand signatures, and that's been set up by the time. I mean, it's never going to actually overturn the decision, but it just shows how passionate people are about this. Oh, and, and, and to be honest, we talked about Tonga carrying the World Cup on its back, and again. It's just showing well, the passion it's, it's that these people It's proof in the 60,000 signatures on a petition that they did carry the World Cup. Yeah, within, what, three or four days they got that much? Well, um, I mean, exactly. And I've been pretty critical of the whole World Cup um, logistics the whole that's time. That's one thing they got right. That was the only <laughs> game. That was the only game they got right. Yeah. And Tonga doing well. Yeah. So the World Cup organisers should be jumping on the back of Tonga as well because yeah. logistically I've, it was a fast. Okay. Anyway, they nailed, they nailed the logistics of this game. Yeah, yeah. this was one of the best games I've seen. Regardless of Tonga getting beat and the and the final little little thing there, you know, like England played great. You know, they defended their asses off. Yeah. They went, you know, they went eighty minutes with Tonga. A bar the last seven minutes, which was just showed how much in, strike power. In Tonga any has, game man. in any sport around the world, you know, obviously there's crowds at one hundred and ten, hundred and twenty thousand. But to see a stadium just painted red, yeah, with flags singing like that, there's yeah. no atmosphere. Like that. I don't think I better don't think, than that around the world. No, I it think, can't be. And a lot of players that have played, um, you know, Origin and and Test football and Grand Finals were saying that it was up there better than that. Yeah, just for that, just for that 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 moment right then with the, you know, the singing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it's made everyone so emotional. So where where to now for Tonga? I mean, that's that's the sixty four million dollar question. You look at Taumalolo for Fita, the the sacrifices that they've made. Yeah. Now what? This is interesting they, because I know uh, Wolfie's come out and said. They need to have more Pacific tests for these second-tier nations to grow more tests against New Zealand because they've only got one test next year, and that's against Samoa. In why May. wouldn't they be playing against New Zealand? Well, that's a th well. Now they've off They'll the back go back of this, to the drawing board. They have to go yeah, back to the drawing board and go. All right, we need more tests. We need to grow these nations. Mm. Does Taumalolo go back and play for New Zealand? These guys Does have made such a Australia? big standing. Like yes. even Fusitua, Takayaho, Fafida, Taumalolo, especially. Manu Ma'u, all these guys, they've gone, you know what, I'm playing for Tonga. That's a big step. And I just hope, hope that, and they've made so much ground yep. in the world game. I don't want them to go back and play for New Zealand and Australia. I don't oh, think they will. I just, I don't oh, think. And, no, and you've you got to think of the financial benefits. And you know, is, you're only in the game a short period of time. And nothing's going to change anytime soon for the yeah. second tier nations to get the money that Australia and New Zealand are getting. That's just a fact. They're not going to get paid as much. They're not going to get anywhere near as much. So you're only in the game a short period. You've got yeah. to think, what's best for my family? What's best for me financially? Yeah. 50 grand to play for Australia, plus more, the match man. payments, maybe more. Yeah, You're yeah. costing yourself probably close to 100,000 a year. Like, you don't think they can sit back now and go, all right, you know, Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, they've come up in leaps and bounds in the last four years. Do they not le at least get half? I know they're not going to get as, as much as Australia. Australia's been the best country in the world forever. I yeah. think they deserve at least half. They're getting paid thirty dollars a day, Ren. Yeah, I know. I, look, that that'll that will improve. That's got to but improve. But I don't know where the funds come from for this World Cup. Obviously, Australia is the number one rugby league country, so the Australia, the ARL has got the funds to be able to pay these players this amount of money. New Zealand rugby league are the same. Obviously, they're not on the same scale as the Aussies, but. The Australian rugby league can't turn around to Samoa, Tonga, and Fiji and say, "All oh, right, you guys have all this money as well." Yeah, it has yeah. to come from the islands. It has to everything that's built for these for these nations has to come from the islands. And we know what the islands are like with the yeah. politics back there. When you know, and in the past, money's gone missing. We've got to get cetera, the administration. It all starts from the top exactly. to bottom, and we, we all know that. And hopefully, this sends a message to the whole you know to the whole of the islands. You know, just get the 
the, the proof is in the pudding in this World Cup. There's so much talent in the islands, and throughout the NRL, something needs to happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was disappointed that Tonga lost because I think it would have been just an unbelievable story. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's as I said, it's a shame that it finished the way it did. The other game was probably not as close. Um, Fiji a little bit outgunned there by, uh, by the Australian side. We did a live stream, which was a lot of fun. Um, I vaguely remember the end of the game, it's but very I'm pretty fun. sure that Fiji copped a bath by the end of it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, look, Australia, Australia did put a, put, they put a show on. Flex they their flexed muscles. their muscles on the, on the whole World Cup and said, look, don't forget about us. We're the best nation. We've been the best nation for the last 100 years. So, yeah, I think, you know, it was a valiant effort from, from Fiji. You know, they ripped in. They didn't stop trying, but they just got out class. You know, their forwards just ran harder. You know, their backs, everything like that. Billy Slater, Valentine Holmes, six tries. You know what I mean? Like, he's serious. Unbelievable. Yeah, Unbelievable. With one try. Unbelievable. He's six in one uh, game. Yeah. But I mean, 11 like, tries in two. 12 in 12. I think he's got through the whole thing. Well, yeah, 12 all up maybe, but it yeah. was definitely 11 He just 11 beat Wendell's two, record. Yeah, five, he's been, five, five six. Quarter, he's beaten Wendell Saylor's rec record for the World Cup. So, um, Wendell will be heaps happy with yeah, that. Yeah, Wendell will be <laughs> filthy. But, uh, yeah, I just think, I don't think Australia... Well, congratulations to Fiji anyway. Like it wasn't, were, yeah, that was You know, nice. that's just another nation that's... They've been, like I said a couple of weeks ago, they've made three semifinals now. Yeah. You, know, you throw Corbin Sims and Tarek Sims into that mix and a Kane Evans... You know, they'll, they'll, go, they'll mix it good with, with Australia. They had some they real young back rowers. Yeah. They had Braden Villiarmi in yeah. the back row, who's a centre, who played outstanding. But, I mean, like, you, you get some senior players within that pack and then it just strengthens that bench up because <laughs> their, second, their second stint wasn't as good. You know, the guys coming off the bench, they just weren't, weren't having that impact and you can't get yeah. 80 minutes out of them big boys out there. Yeah. So, you know, it was a massive effort from them blokes. But, you know, their next World Cup for all the islands, you know, look out. I'm looking for... Massive, probably improvement on that. It should be one of them second tier nations now in the final, hopefully. One thing that we talked about that I vaguely remember was that Wade Graham sat on the bench for, I think yeah. it was 60 minutes, 65 minutes. 55 to 60 minutes he yeah. sat on the bench. Yeah. I mean, do you think, was that a, did he get forgotten about? Was it, was it a it's tactic? A, it's was a pretty it... common theme now with most NRL teams that will only play six, 16 players. Yeah. The 17th player is like almost like an 18th man. Well, who do you pick there? Yeah, because I was well, arguing about. I was thinking, do you put, do you put a monster there to come on and he can fill any any position? You go with three props and then you yeah. go with the monster, well, we, or do you go with three props and then a back row, a lock, five eight sort of player like? Um, well, it's changed in the past. You know, you always had the Cra the Craig Wing on yeah, the bench or the Kirk Gidley. Gidley. You had that utility to cover those roles, yeah. but now they're going with a bigger bench, and the players these days are so skillful they can cover. Certain positions, yeah. whether they're back rowers, but then you or can backs. Move Cameron Smith are all around. Absolutely. And, yeah. So, what I said before is that most NRL coaches are just playing with sixteen players, and the seventeenth guy is almost like an eighteenth man. He'll get limited time. Yeah. It's getting the most out of those sixteen players, and you're just there to cover that position if you're coming in. It sucks. I've been on the end of it at Canterbury in 2014, where I was only getting seven minutes. But I understand what the coaches are trying to achieve in that role. Mm. Um, you know, Wade Graham. Imagine him. Well, like you're like a Wade Graham yourself. You can well, sort of, you can see that. He can cover back row, halves, centres. Centre so, centre, like, yeah. he'll Mao will stick with the the core of the team for the majority of the t of that game. And then if Wade Graham's needed, he'll bring him in. Yeah, it does suck, but I think obviously he'd be telling Wade Graham before that. So that's why you don't see a Wade Graham sitting there unsettled or anything like that through the first half. Mm. And then in the second half, you can see him getting a little bit fidgety, knowing that he might get that last 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah. That's Obviously, that's, that's the relationship with the coach that comes in there, and Mal's great at that. You know, he'll come in there and tell you. But if, if you don't get told by a coach, I've been in situations mm. like that mm. where a coach hasn't told me, I'm fucking lost at that much. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well, you sit on the bench. That's happened to me once when I've sat over on the bench more than half the game. I, I nearly sat, lost it. At least, at, least, at least tell me, mate. Yeah, Cowboys? I sat on the bench. No, I was at the dogs when I was younger was with folks. Yeah, I was like, yeah, mate, what's right. going on? I sat on the, I sat on the bench for 73 minutes in Canberra in the middle of the winter. <laughs> oh. My toes were frozen. I had long pants on. Well, I reckon I one, of the, one of the stories of the World Cup to, for me has been the rise of Regan Campbell Gillard. Yeah, he's my I mean, man. he wasn't even going to be in the side until Fafita pulled out and went to Tonga. And yet the way him and his moustache were playing on the weekend... It's a beautiful it was, caterpillar. It's an amazing moustache. But he is just so tough. I think, I think, the, I think this, that, that was a game he needed against Fiji. Yeah. Because if he didn't play... For, you know, he's, he's Fijian. You know, he's played for Fiji before. So you see him coming off the bench, off the back fence, and just smashing into it. He was copping contact big time from yeah, the Fijians yeah. every, time he, every time he ran the ball. And that's what I want to see him 
doing exactly the same thing against these Poms because yeah. they're going to come at you. They've got that big Wormsley prick coming off the bench, and he's a monster. Like he's, he's six foot one. six, six foot seven, and he's been monster in team. So I want Campbell Gillard. Obviously, I think Mal and all the boys would be getting into him. Go, mate. He's your man. Mm. Take his head off in the first whatever. Whenever you just get on, go on at the same time. Go head to head, and it'll be a great. It'll be a great battle. After the two semi-finals are finished, and obviously the the final comes up this weekend, has the World Cup been a success? Better be thanking these blokes behind us, mm. big time. We've said it from the start. You watch every single sh like sports show, everybody like that. They've all they've all said the same thing. You know, we're we're all pro Australia here, and we're all going for Australia, but. Like, we expected them to be in the final. Mm. You know, we didn't expect Tao Malolo to play for, for Tonga. We didn't expect Fafita. We didn't expect half them blokes. But this little nation of ours, you know, they've, they've come up, they've made big decisions, and they've, and they've rose to the top, you know. Mm. So I think the World Cup should be thanking, thanking Tonga for yeah. the success it's had. And Very what much. we're still talking about this now. Yeah. We're not, no one's even talking about the England and Australian game. We're talking about this decision that the Chechen Cat couldn't make. <laughs> well, good on Tonga. The final of the World Cup is finally upon us after what seems like a fairly long period of time. Australia is playing against England. Australia will go in as hot favourites and deservedly so. Are England any hope? And don't say because Wayne Bennett coaches them. I, I think they are. I, I know a lot of these blokes. I've, you know, I've been over in the Super League and I, these, these are big men. They're a lot bigger than the Australian team. You know, Wormsley, big body, and I thought he was outstanding against the Tongans. I think he pretty much saved the English forward pack because every time he ran the ball, he had three or four blokes, Tongans hanging off him. Mm. And they're not small boys, but when I say big, they're all tall. They're tall. all big, tall they're humans. They're not big like. No? Not bigger than you. Warm. Not harder. <laughs> um, you've got Burg the, both the Burgess boys. James Graham's definitely one of the toughest blokes I've ever played alongside. You know, <coughs> real tough pommy prick. Certainly a lot tougher than you. Uh, Hodgson's a huge loss. But then you go through their back line as well. Like, I'm a massive fan of Watkins. I've seen what he's done over in the Super League. Mm. His footwork, he's a very classy centre. He'd definitely suit the NRL. McGilvery on the wing, he's almost impossible to tackle when he gets going. So they've got a lot of class. They've got strike. They've got a big set of forwards. And they're not scared of the Aussies one bit. Yeah, you know? I agree. And they have improved each game. Yeah, Widdop's I, I, been enormous for him yeah. too. I agree. The change from Widdop to fullback. Like he just had, he adds that class. He's always around the back. I mean, like he's he's, he's like a Michael Morgan. You know, Morgan can play fullback easily because he's got that skill. Because a five eight needs a skill as a one. One needs a five needs a skill as a six as well. And he's got he's got both. I just think um, the forwards aren't scared, as you said. They have got Sam Burgess leading that way. They have got James Graham. They have got Big Walsley and O'Loughlin, the captain. They're all got these big boys, and they can all pass the ball. They're all got skill. I just worry about the halves. I worry about Gale, and I worry about Brown. They were non-existent against Tonga. They're very classy Super League they players. They are classy Super League players, but when they come up against Australia, they have not played good. And they need to stamp their authority on this World Cup. By, and if they go to that next level, if Gale goes to that next level, I think England's got a massive chance to win it. Yeah. But he has not stepped up in any big games, man. He can play. He can play. No doubt he can play. But I just want him, I want him to take the line on, run the, run the ball a little bit, like instead of catch, pass, catch, pass, catch, pass. Like, he's a skillful player. He can, he can not only kick, but they're going to be attacking him in... in it's a, different, it's a different styles of Super League and NRL. We yeah. know how to defend the way they play. Yeah. They, they love that block. You know, the lead runner out the back, lead runner out the back, lead runner out the back. It's so easy to it's read. It's predictable. It's like, so the predictable. The way that England play because yeah. they're copied. I think England has copied the way we used to play. Where, where back, just say, 10 or 15 years ago, the Pommies used to throw the ball out everywhere. They're offloads. They had no structure. Yep. But they were so. it's hard to defend against structure. Now offloads. they've gone too much into the structure football, which we created. So yes. we can read their plays I think well before. They're definitely a side that forward pack's big enough to, to create the offload. They're not going to be scared of us. You know, the, create an offload, create second phase for the English side, and that's where they're going to trouble the Aussies. Yeah, and I think Sam Burgess needs need to be smashing on that left edge. He's got Ryan Hall, don't forget him, he's a world-class winger. You've got Bateman in the centres. Yeah. So, so what do they do? Time. What do they do different from when they played Australia in that first round? <sighs> well, they just need they need to throw the ball. They need to be hitting holes and everything. Like They need to be doing everything that they haven't been doing. Like Wayne Bennett, the way that Wayne Bennett asks you to play, you can see them blokes all bust in the last seven to ten minutes mm. because because he asks a lot from his players. Well, you've got to work so hard, all these little things that people don't really understand or see. They're working for market, the kick chase, all this kind of stuff. They're getting the big boys down there, and it takes a lot out. Yeah. You know, so they have to go, they have to really, obviously they're going to empty everything that they've got out there, but they have to complete with Australia. They have to, and when they get their chances in the red zone, 
they're going to have to just chance their arm, not with stupid offloads or anything like that, but it's going to be up to a Sam Burgess, Elliot Whitehead, a Gale, run the ball every now and again. Brown, run the ball. Widdop's going to come up with some magic stuff. So they're just going to have to play some decent, some really good unstructured mm. football sometimes. Yeah, that, I think you're right. And 73 for 73 minutes of that game, their defensive unit was outstanding, yeah. the way they worked for each other. You know, that, I, that I was see, typical of a Wayne Bennett side. Yeah, I, I see this game very similar to the grand final in that for England to win, they have to be the best version of themselves yeah. for 80 minutes and Australia have to be poor because otherwise I just can't see England getting on top. Yeah, I just I, I can because I, I just don't – Australia's been dominant but they haven't – I think they might be just – it might be this game that they just show everyone, you know what, you know we're nearest. You know we're nearest. We'll put yeah. 30 points on you. But, I mean, as I said, like, England can match it with anyone man to man. It's just the Cameron Smith, the Billy Slay, the Cooper Cronk little trio that gets everybody again. Mm. You know, they'll get yeah, they'll catch a slip and it doesn't matter if it's 60, 70, 79th minute or this the second will, minute. You know, they'll, they'll a, get you at one time. This will be a lot closer than you think. I don't I, think it's going to be I would blown. not be surprised if England did get the win. Would it be good for world rugby? Be well, terrible sorry, sorry, would it, I mean, would it be good for world rugby league? Well, we're always been. Well, we haven't really been that dominant in World Cups. We lost two thousand eight. Uh, four nations, have we? Like in the Kiwis have been against against a very strong uh, Kiwi side. Well, yeah, I mean, but I just think we missed the the magic sort of left edge with the Greg Inglises, where we always seem to go left with JT, yeah, and it was just it was whenever we needed something. Like I played in them sides where JT and, and GI and, and Lockie were there. It was just like, okay, we'll go bang, 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 and then go left, and then it's a try. Mm. You know, oh, Darius Boyd or someone on that left wing would just be scoring tries every, every day. I'm a massive fan of that Australian team. It's outstanding. But you forget, imagine having Jonathan Thurston or Greg Inglis in that It's massive. They've been playing for I the last 30 tests. There's no way I'd give England a chance if those two were in the, the only The only yeah. reason why I do give them a chance because there is no JT and there is yeah. no GI. I have to because agree. the money the money ball when you want when everyone's doing their job, England seem to suffer on that on their right edge and GI seems to score try after try, or the winger or Billy Slater. It's just too it was just too easy for Australia. Now they've lost that threat. You know, their left centre isn't as good. No disrespect to Chambers, he's a great centre, but he's no GI. No. You know, and the right centre with Dugan, we hardly, we hardly ever go right. You know, so I just think we lose that, just that little bit of magic on that left, but it's hard to replace it, with it. It would definitely put a lot more fear into the English boys if them two were playing. Mate, as soon as GI steps on the field, he's just, like, if you've got Billy Slater out the back and you've got GI there, man, and you've got your back you row doing your job and you've got JT, like, it, was just, it, was just, it was just a scary thought. What about the crowd? I mean, the crowd against Fiji was pretty disappointing, I thought. Yeah. You know, I thought it was a for a Queensland, for a Queensland, in Brisbane, yeah. in Brisbane especially. You know, they turn up for their... For the Broncos, yeah. you know they 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 pack out a Friday night game. It's yeah. the best game ever. It's yeah. thirty thousand yeah, plus. It was a little bit disappointing. Like the, no doubt it'd be sold out. Will it be? Yeah, I, I think, think they'll they'll turn up. I mean, you and reckon? the the Pommies will turn up. There'll be about twenty of them, I reckon. They're all twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. I mean, look, they're, they're here for the Ashes. They'll so all they're be just, down they'll Adelaide. Well, they'll they could be. fly up for the one-off, I guess. Yeah. If you come all the way, they're very patriotic, the mate. Here. I'll come here for the World Cup final. You're here. It's only what flight. you just yeah. threw here for thirty hours in transit. Now you can just can't you can't travel three hours. I'd be pretty keen to leave Adelaide too. Yeah, I get the hell out of Adelaide. There's nothing there. I, 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 I don't know. I reckon. I reckon. I, I would like to see it be a full house because it would. Oh. To it won't some be extent, Origin full house. It'll be. It'll be. It'll be, thir- it'll be thirty-five thousand forty, maybe. For me, there hasn't been the interest in it that's going to get fifty-two thousand a Suncorp. And I think a lot of people feel the same way I do, that Australia's just going to put points on them. Do you think there's I've, been enough I interest in I seriously think Cup? in the last two weeks, because of the Tongan team, because of all the stuff with England and Australia's always you're going to, there's going to be 30,000, 40,000 to every final of the World the Cup. The Tongans will all be there with English voodoo dolls and yeah. Chechen, <laughs> Chechen voodoo dolls The Chechen, well. they'll be there with Chechen cats. <laughs> yeah, it should be a sellout. The tape is the sellout. Yeah. Oh, look, for me, I think Australia win by 15, 20. Field goal. Field goal? Who's <laughs> going to pop a field goal? Someone will. <laughs> Mike Dolan. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I can buy four four points. All right. Ren? I'll just go against both of you and say there'll be an upset. The Poms will win. Damn it, I was going to say win. that. I think with the injury to Hodgson as well, it probably opens up. I mean, A, England are without one of their best players, but it also opens up that whole thing. Now, the Raiders, there's talk that they're already over their cap for next year. And now they're losing a player on big money yeah. for the next six months to eight months. I think there needs to be something put in place 
in an NRL contract or a Super League contract, similar to what they do over in the NFL called IR, injury reserve. So just say if Hodgson's worth a million dollars and he gets injured in a World Cup or gets injured in Origin or anything like that, the clubs have to be compensated somehow because it, it, it goes against you, it comes and hits you in the cap again. So he's going to go back to, he's, he's going back near now, he's out for the whole year. So they're without a hooker. And, and he's going against the cap as well. So something needs to be put in place. I don't, I don't know if they can do it ASAP, which so won't who, happen. Who I'm pays not... for it in, in the NFL? Who pays for that? Does that does, is the it club still, I mean, the, the y- club insu- still pay. Yeah, the insurance. I don't know how it works in the NFL, but I yeah. mean, like, obviously you're going to get paid by Canberra, you know, but I just don't think it should be against their cap. Yeah. Especially if you, if you lose a bloke like Cherry Evans or something like that, who's a, or a player who's on a mil plus, that's a lot of your cap space for a year. You know what I mean? So the cap, the clubs have to be compensated somehow. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's it's especially interesting. in or, in Origin, you know. Like, and I don't want the game to come to because in the in the next ten years, twenty years, you can't say. Like in the last twenty years, the cap has tripled. Mm-hmm. You know, since I started playing in two thousand, the cap has tripled. It was about two point three three million, and it's gone to nearly ten now. So you can't say in twenty years that the ga- the game's not going to be worth triple. So then you're going to be looking at players that are on two or three mil. Is it worth playing Origin? Is it worth playing all these tests? And you don't want to get to that point where it is like in the NBA and the NFL where you know they go out there and they play pretty much play touch football because they don't want to get injured for their club because at the end of the day the club is the one who's paying you. Yeah. So I just you, think they should work something see, out. You don't want to see situations either like with Milford when he was when Bennett basically said he couldn't play for some while because again you don't want to get your star players injured in those yeah. things. So if there's some sort of facility in there it's probably not a bad idea. I just think something needs to happen because it's going to happen all the time and you just don't want the product like a World Cup or an Origin to be sort of sanitised down because of, because of players that are on three or four million dollars yeah, in the next 10, 10 or 15 years. You know? mm. And you can't say that it's not going to happen. In the first test of the long-awaited Ashes series of this year, Australia gave England a nice pizzling by 10 wickets in what was probably a surprise to many. Now, boys, I watch a lot more cricket than you because you have more exciting lives. But (laughs) in saying that, it was probably a fairly surprising result. I think England would be... I mean, England were poor, but are Australia that much better? Like, I watched a little bit of cricket over the weekend. I did have some things to do, but, um, you know, it's, it's hard for us... Just, I got ADHD, so it's hard for me to sit there and just you're not watching and watch, for, five and watch for five days. But I mean, like obviously, Ben Stokes got left out of the side for disciplinary reasons, and apparently, one of the other blokes got in a fight with a guy in Perth, and he played shit house, and they were sledging the hell out of him. So there was a lot of questions saying, you know, is there something wrong with their culture? The, you know, is it a drinking culture? Is it a fighting culture? You well, know, ben they got belted by ten wickets, which is massive. And I thought, I thought England was going to come here and just smash the shit out of us. Oh, I expected us to get beaten too because the top order so weak. But Ben Stokes is, I mean, for basically what he's done is he's gone out in England, he's whacked a couple of blokes, he's got a fairly handy little right he hand too, the one big two. Time. It's not a bad shot, yeah, but you see? he's been he's <laughs> a Kiwi. That's you. why. So he's that, he's been left at home now. After the first test, let's be honest, they're going to panic. There's no question that he's not going to turn up. So he's just actually got on a plane. He's flying to New Zealand, which is to, to see his family. But they reckon oh, they're he's slyly gonna, getting him in. Here. Yeah, but oh. they reckon he's going to go and play some cricket over there just to get himself into tune. Now, if he's not allowed to play for England, how's he going to New Zealand and playing over there? Isn't there some sort of international rule where it just sounds like a rot? Well, Ashes is the pinnacle of cricket, and England don't want to lose it. No. So if they're going to. They will change the rules or bend the rules to bring Stokes back into their lineup. Yeah. Do you reckon they were just too cocky coming over here thinking they were just going to beat the crap out of us? I think there was a bit of that. Suck shit to them, man. Yeah, I think there was a bit of that. I mean, look, Brisbane's hard to win at. And I think the Australian top order's been weak for a while. Um, and I think the, the bowlers probably underperform. I mean, they're two opening bowlers. They're probably Nathan the best. Lyons are gun. He's so yeah, underrated, he's, man. Oh, we're going with our pacemen. They've got a three-pronged paceman and they've got Nathan Lyon up there just taking wickets, running blokes out, everything like that. He's a gun. He's that underrated. I yeah, think it's because he doesn't look like a sportsman. He looks I mean, like because, he should I think because Shane, ho- <laughs> Shane Warne just hovers over the whole spinning, spin bowling in Australia and he'll do it forever. Oh, even with Stuart McGill, I mean, like he was probably one of Australia's best bowlers, but like because he was next to Shane Warne, yeah. you never, you're always going to get compared to the greatest. So yeah. it'd be interesting when Stuart McGill gets on here anyway and says his little well, piece. Stewie's coming on here to have a bit of a chat. Then we can actually, he, he can actually, we can actually get someone on who knows what they're talking about. Can you take honestly, knowing you, can you imagine standing on a field for five days? A, with the wicketkeeper saying "Nice Gary" every five minutes, you'd be putting a stop to that every five seconds, but. I just can't see you ever playing cricket. 2020 cricket balls the hell out of me. 
well, let alone five days. You but got I mean, you got you got. Yeah. I mean, that just gets my attention, and I think it's. I think it was. I think if it wasn't for twenty twenty cricket. I think the game was slowly just dying in Australia because they've got such good players now. You know, cricket's obviously out. Cricket's like America's baseball. Yeah. yeah everyone just sits back and loves it. So, you know, I respect every single cricket player who wears a baggy green. So that's the main point. And I always sit back and watch it. If it's a little bit exciting, there's a couple of times there I've sat back and just watched some great Ashes games. So, yeah, I mean, like, Ashes was growing up. Yeah, you know, I loved sitting there for five days. It's been around forever. It's because been around since 1884, 85. Because we know the blokes like Warney and Booney exactly. and all these characters, McGrath. all these characters was, were in our faces when we were younger. I swear to God, I don't know what anybody in, in the team. I think it's just really sanitised these days, and and that's just the way the game is in every sport, really. Well, Cameron Bancroft, Cameron Bancroft came out. He's a bloke who got headbutted allegedly by this by Johnny Best, and not even allegedly. They're all saying it happened. But he's come out and he said basically that he said, oh, the bloke came up, he was shaking my hand and then he put his head into mine. Except Liverpool I've, kiss. Except I've got the biggest head in Western Australia. <laughs> so, do you know what, in his first test for him to be coming out, hopefully there's a few characters that will start coming back because it is too sanitised now. You just... That's just the way that, that the whole, every sporting, it's not just, it's not just cricket, it's, it's NRL, it's union, it's all that sort of stuff. It's all social media. They don't give a shit what the media think. They just care about their Instagram followers. Yeah, like you. Two of, well, we've got two of the last big celebrity <laughs> personality footballers on our panel, and I'm very happy, yeah, proud to have it. You should be thankful, mate. Quick shout out to my favourite human being on the planet, Finn Byrne. Happy birthday, mate. Eight years old, best eight years of my life. And it's the only eight years of yours. So <laughs> happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Finn. Love you heaps. Little Huckleberry. <laughs>